What's going on, Swamp Squad? This is Swamp Live Reptiles, and we are back with another video. Today's video is gonna be fun and very informative. I received questions from a lot of the viewers about keeping Diamondback Terrapins in fresh water or brackish water. In today's video, we're gonna dive into that topic. So buckle up, get your goggles, and get ready to jump in. Over the years, I have had the pleasure of keeping Diamondback Terrapins in both fresh and brackish water. And in today's video, I'm going to go through the pros and cons of fresh water versus brackish water for them. First, we're going to discuss the pros of fresh water. So the first pro that comes to mind when I think about keeping Terrapins in fresh water is the fact that Diamondback Terrapins are one of the only species in the world that live in brackish water. Brackish water is water that is in between fresh water and salt water. For that reason, if you keep your diamondback terrapins in brackish water, you don't have a lot of options to cohabitate them with. Other turtle species cannot live in brackish water. They do not have the ability to secrete the salt. Okay? For that reason, many people who keep diamondback terrapins in fresh water prefer to keep them in fresh water so that they can keep other species of turtles with them. I have been one of those people that have kept diamondback terrapins with other species. I've kept them with map turtles. I've kept them with musk turtles. It's great. It's a beautiful sight. The second pro that I'm going to discuss with you is the fact that, well, not very many live plants can survive in brackish water. Now, if you're out in the brackish marsh or brackish estuaries, the brackish mangrove trees or, or mangrove swamps, yeah, you're gonna see live vegetation everywhere. But a lot of those live vegetation areas survive only in the wild. It's very difficult to keep some of those species of plants in captivity. So when keeping diamondback terrapins, if you wanna have live plants in your enclosure, fresh water is probably the option that you're gonna to wanna to pick. Now, I'm about to show you my pond that is a freshwater pond that keeps diamondback terrapins in them. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here, I have a 300 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank that is a fresh water pond. As you can see, I have live plants here, water lettuce, I have driftwood, and I have some filtration. The live plants definitely help with the filtration, but the one thing you'll notice is that the live plants cover most of the water. That is not an option for brackish water. I tried adding salt to this pond earlier in the summer and it actually killed off all of my live plants. So if you have a desire to keep your animals in fresh water, or if you have a desire to keep your animals with live plants, you're going to want to choose fresh water for your animals. The third pro that comes to mind when keeping diamondback terrapins in fresh water is, well, they are readily accessible to fresh water. When you keep diamondback terrapins in brackish water, you're gonna wanna expose your terrapins to fresh water. They drink fresh water. They need fresh water, okay? In the wild, diamondback terrapins can be seen drinking water off the top level of the marsh water or in rain puddles, in holes in the ground that have fresh water. And so many people who keep their terrapins in fresh water do that so they don't have to also provide fresh water to their terrapins. Now we're gonna talk about some cons to fresh water. Here's the thing, because diamondback terrapins are found in brackish water, they are very sensitive. And what I mean by sensitive is very sensitive. They're not a species that you can just keep in dirty water. I've had plenty of fungal problems with diamondback terrapins on their skin and shell. And it's easy to deal with, but it's a hassle. And all of those problems, I promise, have come from terrapins that were living in fresh water. By adding salt to your water, it eliminates a lot of problems that diamondback terrapins can face. Now, I'm not saying that salt is, you know, the superhero 
for Dimebag Terrapins, but it relieves a lot of stress for their health. So I'm sitting here thinking of other cons on why you shouldn't keep your Diamondback Terrapins in fresh water. And really, the health of your animal is the only one that I can think of. Except for the fact that when Diamondback Terrapins are in fresh water, they secrete a lot more urea. That is their waste, their pee and their poop. When Diamondback Terrapins are in brackish water, that's cut down tremendously because of the amount of liquid that they are absorbing or drinking is also cut down. Now I'm getting pretty excited because now we're gonna talk about the pros of keeping your terrapins in brackish water. Honestly, the cons to fresh water are the pros to brackish water. So my first pro, the health of your animal. Diamondback terrapins tend to do a lot better in brackish water. Again, I'm not gonna say you can't keep them healthy in fresh water, but if you have the option or availability to keep your animals in brackish water, I highly suggest you do so. The second pro to keeping your animal in brackish water is the amount of waste they release. Like I said, in brackish water, they release a lot less waste. And the third pro is keeping them as natural as possible. Diamondback terrapins are found in brackish marshes and estuaries. So why would you wanna keep your animal in fresh water if you don't have to? I'll tell you that a question I get all the time about fresh and brackish water is, well, I keep them in fresh water because it's just easier. Guys, I'm here to tell you that making brackish water is super simple. It's as simple as getting a pitcher or a cup, scooping in a bag or a box of salt, and pouring it into the water. Now, of course, you have to measure it, and you have a, a meter that, that you put into the water to see what your salinity level is, but it's super simple. I transition my terrapins from fresh to brackish all the time. As soon as I notice a problem in my freshwater setups, I take the terrapins out, I put them in brackish water soaks. Here at Swamp Life Reptiles, I keep a variety of fresh and brackish water setups. Now I'm gonna show you one of my brackish water setups that I deal with and love. This is a Rubbermaid 100 gallon stock tank. This is a brackish water setup. Here you can see Yoda, the male ornate diamondback terrapin basking. Now. This is an outdoor brackish setup, which does take a little bit more work. But if you keep your animals indoors, brackish water is not much of a problem. It's as simple as adding salt, making sure that when your tank water evaporates, the salinity level doesn't spike. And then when you do water changes, adding more salt. It's just keeping up with levels. Now outdoors, it can be a little bit more challenging because the rainwater dramatically changes the salinity. But after talking to Chris Leone with Garden State Tortoise, I have to admit, I kind of like that. It helps the terrapins get fresh water regularly, as well as getting the salt that they need. With my brackish water setup that's outside, I typically add salt every two to three days. Right now, I'm currently using a pool filter salt. I'll attach a link in the video, and at the end, I'll show you a picture of what I typically use. Uh, but after talking to Chris Leone with Garden State Tortoise, I think I might go ahead and try uh, Instant Ocean and see how that works for them. Even in the brackish water, I have mosquito fish, or gambusia as they're known as, swimming with them, and they're doing just fine. All right, so now we're going to look at some specimens that have been living in both fresh and brackish water. So first, I'm going to show you my Terrapin Casper. He is my favorite male, and he's lived the majority of his life in brackish water. As you can see, look at his shell. It is beautiful. He has no skin fungus problems. He's living a healthy life. Look at the area between the scutes. Okay, absolutely marvelous. He has lived the majority of his life in brackish water. Now, every once in a while, his setup will become extremely uh, fresh water from the rain because he's outdoors, but I usually add salt within a couple of days All right Next we're gonna go ahead and look at an animal that has lived most of its life in fresh water And this is my diamondback terrapin uh, Bumpers she is a female and we're gonna look at her shell. So Bumpers didn't want to participate. So I had to grab uh, another participant. All right, this male is Domino he is a male concentric diamondback terrapin. 
He has lived his life actually both in fresh and brackish water. I got him from a friend of mine, Leslie, who kept him in a very uh, high salinity brackish setup. And when he came here to Florida, I started keeping him in fresh water. Considering I've not had great luck with concentrics and fresh water, he has actually done pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and wet his shell so I can show you what he looks like. His shell is pretty nice, okay? He does have a split skew, so don't mind that. But overall, he's pretty healthy, okay? I do see a, a little spot of foot fungus that I'm gonna start treating. It's not bad. Oh. Let's see if I can get him. Ah. Right there. See that? Yeah. It's not bad and it's easy to treat. But I assure you, if he was in brackish water right now, he'd not have that problem. Okay? With my terrapins that are in my freshwater pond, every, I don't know, month or so, it seems like it's a different terrapin that I have dealing with fungal issues. Eventually, my plan is to only keep my terrapins in brackish water, but right now, I don't have any residents for this pond except for terrapin. Earlier in this video, I discussed that there's not very many options for live plants that you can keep in brackish water, but one of the plants that you can keep that does very well are red mangrove plants. Red mangrove plants are found throughout Florida and many other places where there is brackish and coastal uh, areas. I choose to use red mangroves because I get them from a buddy in Florida that finds them just sitting on the ground uh, and he ships them to me. Uh, I'm in an area of Florida that's not near the coast. I'm an hour and a half in any direction to the coast. And so he sends them to me and they work out great. The red mangroves that I keep, the plan is to eventually have them in my outdoor pond when they grow larger to help keep that water clean so that I no longer have to have freshwater ponds with live plants. There's a lot of pros to keeping live plants that maybe I'll discuss in another video. Another thing I wanted to touch on before we end this video is that if you transition your terrapins from brackish to freshwater, you might actually be surprised. Uh, shell problems tend to be the first issues that arrive and then skin problems. I've seen shell problems arise in as soon as three days. I had a terrapin whose shell completely began to look like crap after three days of being in freshwater. Only three days. That's not a lot of time, okay? I'm not gonna be the terrapin police and come around and tell you you're a horrible owner because you keep your terrapins in fresh water. But in another video, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make brackish water. If you have any questions about how you can make brackish water for large ponds or large aquarium stock tanks, just reach out to me. I'm on Instagram, Swamp Live Reptiles. You can message me here on YouTube, or you can reach out to me on Facebook, also Swamp Live Reptiles. Making brackish water is not difficult. And if you have the option to do so, I would highly encourage you to keep your terrapins in fresh water. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. I can't wait until our next one, which will be on how to make brackish water. Please don't forget, it's easy. Just click the subscribe button so you can get more videos, all right? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this video and follow my channel. Until next time, this has been Swamp Life Reptiles. Later, guys.